Hello, this is Tom, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show. And you might be asking yourself, what the heck is that noise? Well, what that noise is... is on the shortwave band, in this case the 40 meter amateur radio band, they typically broadcast in single sideband mode. And right now, this radio is in AM mode. So you get that kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, Donald Duck noise. And it's unintelligible. And so you have to have a radio that has single sideband capability. That's the advantage. And uh, most of the amateur radio operators use single sideband on HF, the Troy band. And yeah, yeah, time to have another pill. Jeez. Oh, man. Military also uses single sideband. And all of your data transmissions are in single sideband. And the reason being is for the same amount of transmitter power, you can get a more efficient transmission and therefore longer distance if you're only transmitting on one sideband. So you concentrate all the power into one sideband instead of the AM modulation where you're broadcasting the carrier plus two sidebands. So that's the reason single sideband is used. The international broadcast stations don't use that because number one, the bandwidth is not as wide, and number two, it's quite a bit more difficult to tune in a single sideband station. Now, there are two basic single sideband circuits. And the old Grundig uses the old, well, the Grundig 750 uses the old method, which is a separate BFO, beat frequency oscillator knob that you tune in the sideband. The newer radios, such as this Texan PL880, the circuitry is slightly different. It automatically attempts to tune in single sideband mo mode when you select that, and all you do is you use your normal tuning knobs. In this case, your main tuning knob and your fine tune. So I'm going to try to illustrate the two different methods of single sideband tuning. So I'm going to turn the lights down so you get a little better image here of the display and get rid of some of the reflections. Okay. So maybe that shows up a little better now. Let me, uh, let me focus the camera, see if that helps any. Okay. So I'm in the uh, 40 meter band, 40 meter amateur radio band. And I, I don't know if I can get through this demonstration or not because... There's so many variables, so many things changing, the guy that's transmitting may stop transmitting, whatever. So we're going to give it a try. I had this station, and guess what? Oh, there he is. Or somebody else. So I'm still in AM mode, so I need to come down here, turn the volume down. I have two options here. Actually, there are four options. I can choose to use the upper side band or the lower side band. And I'm going to, uh, and you just have to uh, experiment with which to use. Now, there is some conventions, depending on the frequency, which a state, which station should use, upper or low, lower, depending, like, say, on the frequency. But amateur radio operators don't stick to that convention, so they could be on upper or lower. So I'm going to try lower. So I'll push the lower sideband button on this radio. And then I'll turn the volume back on. And I, it so happens I had already tuned it. But what you would do, let me just detune it a little bit. So you can see the frequency is change, changing down to these last two decimal points. So I'm using the fine tuning button. And you just you initially hear something like this. Still kind of Donald Duck. So now you got to fine tune it. And 
Okay, so he's right on frequency. 7.214. So it's now tuned in. Now the one thing about this radio, and as I mentioned in a previous video, I have a love and hate relationship with this radio, is it struggles with single sideband mode. And the previous version of this radio, and all he did was change the firmware, um, really struggled with trying to tune in a single sideband station. This version, which is the second version, um, does a little better job. Now, when I say, when I said before, there are four functions down here. There is upper and lower sideband, and if you push and hold either one of those, or the, uh, the alternate on both of those is normal, meaning no sideband. If you push and hold the buttons, it will kick in the synchronous detection circuit, or synchronous detector, detector circuit which is an undocumented feature. And the reason I think it's undocumented is it still, in the, in the first version of this radio, it didn't work hardly at all. It, just, it would just go crazy. You know, just audio would be up and down and level, and the, the, it would change pitch, and it was a nuisance. The second version, which I have, it would work a little better but it still would struggle trying to stay synchronized so therefore it's, it's not a documented feature because they never finished the design so that you can try to use that maybe it might work for you I've never had it work correctly for me so I don't use it so it does have that other mode it's not in the documentation so that's how you would tune some of these newer vintage radios, you know, many of these, like the Sage Inn and many of them, don't have an extra knob beyond the two tuning knobs to tune in the single sideband. You just use the regular tuning knob. So that's how it works on this radio. Now, we shut this off, lay it down here out of the way, and I'm using, right now, I'm using an external antenna. I'm using my G5 RV antenna to select or receive the station. Now I'm going to switch my antenna over to the uh, Grundig radio, which has the older, I call it technic technology. Boy, look at all the uh, reflections on the screen. Sorry about that. Um, where it has a separate tuning knob for BFO, and it's, and it's called BFO. And you're basically doing the same thing, except the frequency on the display is not changing. So it, it doesn't have those lower two decimal points. So let me see if I can tune in that station. I've got it in AM mode right now. And they're still talking. I don't know how long that the, the bands will hold up so I can get them. So let's go to... Um, single sideband, which is this button over here, and you just push it several times to get the mode you want. So there's upper sideband, and like I say, you may not know which is upper and lower, you just have to try tuning it. If you can't get rid of that Donald Duck sound, try the other sideband. So I already know from this radio it's on the lower side band. So I'll push SSB again. Now I'm in lower. And it turns out that I had tuned it already. And let me detune it using the BFO knob. Okay, now it's detuned. So this is what you might be hearing when you first switch to it. Well, wow, there and the, the station's starting to fall out. So then you have to go to the BF mode mode, or knob, and tune it in very slowly. There we go. Okay, but here comes talking to you guys in the morning. 
and uh, read the chart. Now, I don't know if you noticed, to me, the audio quality for single sideband on this radio, the Grundig 750, is much, much better than the Texan. Uh, the Texan, even when you tune it in, it's kind of a, oh, still has that quacky voice or audio. And it's not really clear as the 750 is extremely clear. Very easy to understand. It's, it, this radio, the single sideband, is to me it's irritable. It just not as as I'm expecting. Of course, you know I'm 99 years old, so I'm from the old school, which had the separate BFO. I have a a big collection of old radios with <laughs> it weigh you know 40, 50 pounds, which use this technology, and I'm used to it, and I'm used to that that kind of deep sound, audio sound. So. I'm a little bit biased. So anyway, that's the two methods, either having a separate BFO, beat frequency oscillator knob, for tuning in single sideband, or in the case of modern radios, you don't have a separate knob, you just use the existing tuning knobs, and on this radio, there's a separate main tuning and fine tuning, so you use the fine tuning to tune in the single sideband transmission. So anyway, I hope this answers the questions. Again, keep in mind, it's a little meticulous to tune in single sideband, especially if you're trying to listen to a broadcast where, say, two hams are talking, and they only talk for a very short period of time. So you kind of get it in and then uh, they stop talking, and so now you have to wait and wait and wait. But if you get somebody that's, uh, well, motor mouth, and he continually talks for a while, then it's pretty easy to tune in. So I hope this helped. If you enjoyed this show, please give me a thumbs up. And I uh, hope this answers one of my viewer questions about tuning single sideband. And you can see, I, I kind of cheated here in that I had them tuned already, but Initially, when you're trying to find something, it may take you a while to get it tuned in to single sideband. And, of course, the radio must have that capability. Not all shortwave radios have that capability, and it usually costs a little extra. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.